System fonts look a bit bland, and we want our application to feature a truly personalized design. Using custom fonts requires two steps in Xcode 7. First, we're going to import our TTF font file. In the navigation panel, control click on the info.plist file and select new group. Name this group fonts. And once it appears in the navigation panel, toggle the folder arrow open by clicking on it. Using the finder, I'm going to locate my font. Mine is called lato underscore 300.ttf and drag it inside the fonts folder I just created. We must make sure that the destination copy items if needed option is checked and in the add to targets list that the name of our application is also checked. The second step requires us to go to the targets info section. To do this click on the project's name in the navigation panel on the project's target. Now if you're on a laptop and can't read it because the column is displayed too small by Xcode just close the utility area and there you can resize your column. So click on the target and then on the info tab. In the custom iOS target properties table we're going to add a line by clicking enter and type fonts Xcode autocomplete fonts provided by application now press enter and there is a slight bug in Xcode which means that you can't type anything once you've just added this line if it happens to you just click on another tab in the screen and go back into the info tab and there fonts provided by application is sorted out to its right place alphabetically click on the disclosure arrow and then as an item in this array we can add the name of our font so in this case lato underscore 300.ttf now both interface builder and our code can access this custom font and assign it to an interface element. Let me show you how to do this with Interface Builder first. I need to get back to my storyboard and to select my label, open up the Attributes Inspector and where it says Fonts, click on the Options arrow now you need to make sure that custom is selected and then in the family drop down menu you can now see the font you just imported in our case lasso when i select it my label updates and displays its text with the new font while we're at it let's take care of our design and layout here our label would be a bit more visible if we dragged it up a little bit and increased the font size. So let's do this. And I'm going to increase the font size to 21. When I do this, the constraints already defined for our label are no longer valid. So instead of re-entering new constraints and values, I'm going to use the Resolve Auto Layout Issues menu and select update constraints and now the orange lines are gone and my label has properly defined constraints okay let's save and let's build and run in the iPhone 6 simulator our label is looking great Let's close the simulator and let me undo this font change to show you how we can achieve it in code.
go to your splash view controller so we can change the text property from the code and we're also going to define our font from code by typing message label font equals UI font name Matto underscore 300 and our size was 21. Now build and run and see what happens. Now in this case we are not seeing the change that we've just implemented in our code. So why is that? Well, let's go back to our class file. The function UI font, in fact, takes the font's postscript name, not the file name. So how do we know what the font postscript name is for our font? Well, one way of doing this is to launch the font book which you can find also in the applications folder on your Mac and here just search for your font lasso and our font was the light version and it says here lasso 300.ttf so the postscript name is lasso hyphen light. So I'm going to copy this, quit font book, and I can paste it as the font name inside my code. Let's save, build and run. Great, this is also working. So to summarize, using custom fonts requires a couple of steps. First, you need to import your font by adding it to your project. Then, you need to add it to the fonts provided by application list in the target's info section. Once you've done those two steps, you can assign the font either in interface builder or in code to any interface element. In the next video, we're going to add a little fun feature to our message display, so keep watching.